Once the patient arrives in the cardiac catheterization suite, he is transferred onto an x-ray table while the cardiologist and nurse practitioner obtain a medical history focusing on issues related to the heart. They perform a physical examination and review the ECG and blood test results. The patient will be asked to sign a consent form for the procedure. The catheterization technician places heart monitoring equipment on the chest and a blood pressure cuff on the arm. Oxygen is delivered to the patient through a tube placed in the patient's nostrils and then IV sedation is administered through IV access in one or both arms. It is not unusual for the patient to experience ongoing heart attack symptoms like chest pain until the artery is opened and blood flow is restored. The emergency angioplasty is performed using sterile technique. The entire team wears sterile surgical attire. Access to the circulation can be obtained from several sites, the most common being the right femoral artery which is located in the right groin. To prepare the site, the hair on the groin is shaved with an electric razor and the skin is cleansed with an antiseptic solution. The groin site is covered with a sterile dressing and the patient is then covered with a sterile drape. A local anesthetic is injected into the skin, causing momentary stinging sensation, quickly followed by numbness. A one quarter inch incision is made in the skin through which a sheath is inserted into the artery. A catheter is placed through the sheath and advanced via the aorta to the heart under x-ray guidance. A contrast agent, which appears black on x-ray, is injected into the left pumping chamber of the heart and the coronary arteries. As areas fill with contrast, these structures are visualized and digital images are recorded. The artery causing the heart attack can then be identified. While observing the artery on an x-ray, a 0.014 inch diameter steerable guide wire is threaded through the guide catheter and advanced past the occluded segment. A balloon catheter is inserted over the wire and positioned into the blockage. The balloon is expanded, compressing the plaque against the lining of the artery, restoring blood flow to the downstream artery and heart muscle. After balloon inflation, the artery may be stented. The decision to place a stent and the type of stent, either bare metal or drug coated, is dependent upon several factors that will be addressed by the interventional cardiologist on an individual basis. Stents are mounted on a balloon catheter and inserted into the artery at the site of the original blockage. When the stent is positioned, the balloon is inflated. The stent expands and becomes firmly pressed into the artery wall. One or more stents may be used in a single artery. Additional balloon inflations may be necessary to properly deploy the stent. The balloon catheter is then removed and the stent will remain permanently in place, keeping the artery open. Emergency angioplasty can take one to two hours, depending upon the complexity of the coronary anatomy. I am Lisa Riggs, an advanced practice nurse at the Mid-America Heart Institute. Following coronary angioplasty, the patient will be transferred to the coronary care unit, or CCU, for close observation and monitoring. Care will be transferred from the interventional cardiologist and his team to his cardiology partner in charge of the CCU and his team. Each room is private, and you will be reunited with your loved one as soon as possible after transfer. The patient will be on bed rest and have a sheath in the right common femoral artery in the groin until the IV anticoagulation medication that he received has had time to reverse. The sheath will then be removed and bed rest will continue for an additional four hours. This process could take a total of eight hours. During this time, the nursing staff will be assessing heart rhythm, blood pressure, and general well-being. The groin site will be continually assessed for signs of bleeding. Pain medication will be available to make your loved one as comfortable as possible. For an uncomplicated heart attack, stay in the CCU is 24 hours for observation and care. Length of stay in the CCU varies depending on medical circumstances. The rounding team will be providing daily updates and is readily available to answer questions. Education about heart attack and dismissal planning starts as soon as your family member arrives in the CCU. After a stay in the CCU, the patient is transferred to a unit for continued heart monitoring until dismissal. The usual length in the hospital after a heart attack is three to five days. The team will be discussing dismissal guidelines, including medications, activity, return to work, and what to do in case of another emergency. This will also include a discussion regarding the cardiac risk factors that contributed to the heart attack and may mean that your loved one is asked to make changes for a more healthy lifestyle. It would be ideal for the patient to participate in cardiac rehab following dismissal. In addition, a follow-up appointment will be made with the cardiology team to be seen within one month of dismissal 
at an office that is convenient to your home. Your support and understanding is invaluable. Please, ask questions of your health care providers. Be sure to watch this DVD after dismissal with your family and take advantage of the experts who discuss diet, exercise, and lipid management.